Hey, welcome back to Historic Investments. Today we're here at the November 2021 Ohio Gun Collectors Association show. It's a site that uh, attracts a lot of uh, collectors and dealers from around the country. And I'm very pleased to introduce David Rackwell. He's owner of Handguns of the World, who was kind enough to bring one of the most attractive World War I ensembles. David, why don't you introduce the gun and, and yourself? Well, thank you, Lynn. Today I brought a, a DWM 1917 Artillery Luger. It's one of the most uh, interesting uh, of the Lugers available. Uh, this full rig has the snail drum and uh, an all-matching set. Uh, I also brought the four-inch for your comparison, but today we'll be discussing the artillery. And without further ado, let's jump in. So today I have both a four-inch Luger and an eight-inch Luger, which is commonly referred to as the artillery. Let me explain to you a couple of the differences. Uh, obviously, the barrel lengths, uh, this one being 7.9, this one being four, and an adjustable rear sight. This specific gun has a stock lug where the earlier versions did not. And the artillery and Navy Lugers were issued with a stock, which we will discuss in a couple of minutes. So this art artillery Luger is a DWM 1917. The artilleries were made uh, between 1914 and 1918, and they represented roughly 15% of the production. This specific one has all matching numbers, and uh, that's kind of important when you're reviewing Lugers because many of them have been renumbered, refinished, restored, and, and that really isn't conducive to a good investment in a, a high quality gun like this. Uh, this specific pistol, as we see it, has 19 numbers. I'm not going to be able to show you all of them because some of them are internal. But let's start with the, the frame, uh, or receiver rather. This is starting with 5419 here, and then your frame has 5419 as well. And the barrel has 5419. Now I'm going to quickly disassemble this. First thing we have to do is remove the, the wood base mag, take the safety off. And Lugers are very interesting the way they come apart. The first thing you have to do is push on the forward of the barrel to bring back and release the pressure of the mainspring so you can remove the side plate. Once the side plate is removed, then the gun easily becomes disassembled. So we're going to look at some of the internal numbers real quick. And one of the things you need to do is remove the toggle pin. I like using the side plate. Toggle pins on World War I guns were unnumbered. But we have some number 19s on this gun. Nice DWM logo. No more 19s, which are the last two digits, which were specific to the way Lugers were built during World War I. Again, we talked about the barrel having 5419 and that. Also, we have this part numbered. And actually, the adjustable rear sight has a number. Sometimes a little hard to see, but we have one here. Notice this one also has a fine-tuned rear sight. Some of the earlier guns actually had a fine-tuned front sight, but not this one. All right, having said that, let's look at the toggle train. We have a number 19 on the breech block, a number 19 on the loaded indicator, center toggle link, and number 19 here. Also, the firing pin, hello, has number 19 on it, but you'll have to pull it back to be able to see it. And then the loaded indicator says Galadin, which at night you can actually feel that it's loaded. A couple of uh, other parts also have 19, the takedown lever, number 19 on the trigger. Your safety bar and safety lever also have number 19 and number 19 on the hold open. Those are the main numbers on a Luger. The grips can or cannot be numbered and the magazine, and in this case, this is a Arsenal replaced magazine without a number, but you should actually be very cautious about having a matching numbered magazine because many people renumbered these to increase the value. When you look at the font on a magazine, you want it to be the same as on the barrel and or on the frame. So th there can't be any disparity 
between the font. If there is, there's been some issues. So quickly, I will reassemble the Luger by putting the toggle back in. And it's a little alignment issue. You push your toggle pin in, you have to close it like that. Now to reassemble the Luger, this little hook is the key to getting this done correctly. And it has to go within a specific spot. It's kind of a learned process. But I've done it a couple times, so I've learned to kind of keep the gun at an angle or upside down and put it till I know that it's gonna drop in the right area. Now, I know it's in the right area because when I push back on this, the toggle doesn't pop up. So we're in the right spot. And then we put back on the side plate. Some people call it a trigger plate. Push back, remember we had to push back to take it down. We got to push back to put it back together. Push this lever up, guns back together. Magazine in, pull it back. Look, it holds open. Remember we talked about the hold open having a number. And it holds open on the last shot. You take your next mag, put it in. When there's a bullet in there, it actually will slam closed and be ready for the next active round. Now, since this artillery is a matching number, this uh, stock rig, I have the complete set here that I would like to discuss with you. All right, as discussed, this has a matching numbered stock. And again, there are some profiteers that will alter the number of a stock to make it more valuable. And you'll kind of notice that sometimes there's some grind marks, discoloration, uh, but the whole thing is you want the font to be identical. And you notice that there's a suffix on this. The suffix also has to be present if it's present on the firearm. So with that said, we have the artillery stock leg rig, which this actually will slide up in there if I do it correctly. I can't see. Like that. And then you flip your lever and it locks. Then your boot can come up over the top. Most of the time, it, anyhow. What, this is how I set it up for firing. Like that. And then you have your, your setup. Now with that said, this specific Luger stock rig, most of them are dated up in here. A little hard to see, this one shows somewhere, but it, there is a manufacturer's date and who made it. We have an original takedown tool. World War I's either had a proof or were unnumbered. And this part actually does a couple things. F facilitates loading the magazine. You put it on upside down and it catches and allows you to assist in loading. And it assists with the grip screw and will also take out the firing pin. That's the three uses for the takedown tool. And with that said, also have an original artillery cleaning rod. There are reproductions with the, within these. I don't have one to compare, but you generally look for a completely smooth knob on the end here. If you see like a rivet or something, it's probably going to be a reproduction. And this one, uh, sometimes you see military proofs on this one, doesn't have it, but because it's so smooth, you can tell that it's a, clearly an original. And then uh, with the Artilleries, a lot of them were issued with a 32 round snail drum and or trommel magazine, depending on who you ask. This specific one is the second issue with the ribs. And one of the ways to tell an original from a reproduction, first off, is the numbers which match. And also there's a military proof. The reproductions don't have a military proof, so something very important to look for. And what they did was 
that you would wind your 32 round drum and lock it in on that key. Then with a loader, which I don't happen to have, you press in your 32 rounds. Once the 32 rounds are in place, you would then release the lever and that would allow the pressure on the bullets to feed properly within your gun. Then you insert and you have the snail drum installed, ready for action. So I did want to point out that this specific gun was World War I military issued and these are the military inspector marks. With that said, we talked about the stock. It also has a World War I proof on the flatboard wood stock. Now I'm going to take a second and attach the stock to the gun and latch it up and put my snail drum into the magazine. And there we have a complete artillery rig from 1917. And this is how it would be issued to the artillery forces in World War I Germany. David, thank you very much for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you at the next Ohio Gun Collectors Association show. Thank you, Lynn. Appreciate the opportunity.